Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dominic Sicali, Mafia Roundtable. I'd like to announce our sponsor, E.G. Vodka and, D -Ro and Champagne de Rock. You have to try the vodka, excellent vodka, 100% organic. The wheat is shipped in from Italy. Yes, so it's an Italian vodka. Now, E.G. Vodka, go to egvodka.com. You'll love the vodka, great taste. Uh, it's unbelievable, hands down. And I know some of vodka drinker. To our next story. This I'm going to go back a little ways. I'm going to go back to when I was arrested on the DEA case, which I never told that story yet. That story will be coming soon. But this is, I was in Miami. I went to MCC Miami. I'm in a housing unit. And I'm waiting to see my counselor while I'm, I'm pre-trial. I wasn't convicted yet. And as I'm waiting to see the counselor, the counselor, there's maybe about 10 inmates out there. And MCC Miami, it was at that time, right now it's called FCI Miami. It was an outside facility, perimeter fence around it. It was medium high inmates. They had all pretrial inmates there. They also had people that were designated there. So I had about the 1,500 people, maybe about 300 were designated to that institution. The rest were all pretrial, fighting their cases or came back on appeals to refight the case. Uh, you had cooperators there, everything at that time. So I'm in the unit, and like I said, I'm waiting in the counselor's office. There's maybe about 10, 15 people also waiting. So there's maybe about three counselors there handling both sides of the unit. All of a sudden, the counselor said, hey, Sakali, come in. So I walk in, did what I had to do. was there maybe about two minutes as I'm walking out. Hey, you know a Donnie? This is looking at the guy. He has a mustache, bald head, built. He says, yeah, what's up? Well, I don't know. He says, get out of here. How, how is he related to you? So it's my father. My father went by Donnie. Everybody called him Donnie. So how's he related to you? It's my father. You know, I did time with your father back in the 70s. My father was in state prison, heroin pinch. So I says, oh, you did? So he says, yeah, my name is Tommy. Tommy Faris, his name. At the time, he was a soldier with the Colombo crime family. So he tells me, no, no, I, uh, I really do know your father, did time, uh, what are you in for? I told him, bullshit case, uh, I'll beat the case. You know, it, they, they basically set me up, they have nothing on me. With that, go downstairs, I said, by the way, you want to speak to my father? Yeah, yeah, sure. Call up, get my father on the phone, hey, dad, I'm with somebody here, he wants to talk to you. They're on for maybe about... Five, ten minutes, hands me the phone back, say, all right, Dad. He says, Dom, Tony, my father called him Tony, to stay, stay close to Tony. Good guy, really good guy. Okay, thanks, Dad. So I said, hey, Tommy, my father said, Tony. So he says, yeah, that, that's what your father used to call me. I think they were in Greenhaven or Attica. So he said, uh, as we're walking, Tommy said, come on, let's go out to the yard. You smoke cigars? Yeah, yeah, I smoke cigars. Grabs a cigar, we head out to the yard. Rec yard, that is. So as we're walking, he said, you must be real wild. I said, what, what do you mean by that? He said, well, your father kept on telling me, please keep my son, my son calm. Make sure he stays calm, he stays out of trouble. So with that, Tommy's like, you're wild out there. No, it wasn't wild. They just didn't take shit from anybody. So we build a rapport, build a relationship. Um, later on, I wound up getting into a beef with somebody on the compound, uh, at, actually at the way pile. Uh, go to segregation. I'm separated from Tommy, but we communicate with visits, visiting rooms. Com Tommy was married to Susan, which was Allie Boy's daughter in the Colombo crime family. Alley Boy was the, I think, brother of uh, Carmine Persico. Not sure, brother, cousin. 
I, I really, I don't investigate, and that never impressed me, people's titles. So Tommy and I see each other through a visit. I'm at trial. Tommy's setting already things up. He's like, when you get out, when you beat the case, because Tommy's very, very sharp, very intelligent. Even my father told me, ask him to recite uh, Shakespeare. That's how this guy is unbelievably smart. He, um, he, meaning Tommy, read the case. He says, they have nothing on you here. You'll beat this hands down. I said, I know. Bullshit case. So uh, Tommy set me up. Go see Joey Flowers when you get out. I meet him on the visiting room. I think Joey was another maid guy. I wasn't sure. So with that, I go to trial. They have me. I'm found guilty. Two-hour trial, open and closing arguments, and we'll go into that at a later podcast. But they hold me. I missed the bus going back that day, so they put me in a county jail for two or three days. So when I finally got back, I run to Tommy on the visit. He said, I was cursing you. I said, look at this little motherfucker he got out, and he didn't even come reach out to Joey like for three days. Yeah, I wish I got out. But Tommy had everything planned for me. Those plans went out the window. I get sentenced. I get 10 years. So I see Tommy on a visit before I'm shipped out. And he tells me, he says, where are you designated to? I said, Lewisburg. He said, all right. At the time, I was married. Wife's name was Kathleen. He says, I have Kathleen in my phone. I'll call her. He was approved on the, on the phone list. I'll call her. I'll let her know. Or just have Kathleen go see Joey. Okay, thank you. So I'm heading up to Lewisburg. They take you, you go to Atlanta or Oklahoma City. They take you all around. It takes about a month sometimes to get there. And they do it just to keep their system working so they could say they have a job. Um, otherwise, if they take you directly to a prison, they would have no jobs. They'd be sitting on their asses half the time doing nothing. They wouldn't have a job, so that would be too easy for them. So I get to Lewisburg. Finally, I get word, look up little Oscar. Okay, little Oscar. So right away, they when you went to Lewisburg, I go through the gates. I'm like looking up. I'm like, oh, fuck. I only have 10 years, a 10-year bid. And the place itself, it's dreary. It could be the brightest, sunniest day. That place is dreary. At that time, it was old, but the architecture was unbelievable. Something you would see in one of these vampire movies with the gothic architecture and everything. Beautiful building. But, again, dreary. So I'm there. They put you in segregation before they bring you out. And as I'm in segregation, they put me in a, a cell with a biker. So, hey, how you doing? What's your name? You're Italian. Oh, there's a lot of Italians here. I said, do you know a little Oscar? So I was asked to look for a little Oh, yeah, I know him. Little Oscar, his last name's Ansorian, was Armenian. Great, great guy. I mean, wonderful, dangerous. He was very close with Vic Amuso and Anthony Caso, gas pipe. And I have stories about that. Oscar and I got extremely close. He yells out, because where the segregation was, the windows are open. You see all the inmates going out to the rec yard. Hey, somebody give a message to Oscar. Tell him there's a guy here, one of his people, Dominic. So it might have been maybe a week and a half. I get out of the shoe, thank them. I leave. Oscar's there waiting for me with gift bag, you know, sweats and everything. Oscar has no clue how I knew, like, who sent me. So, Lewisburg, they had separate. They called A, B, C, and D unit was MAB, M-A-B. That's the most aggressive behavior units. Lockdown, that side. All, all the cells are locked down. The other side, they called Jorms, Jorm, dorm side, J H I. Dorm side. So Oscar, most of the Italians were in dorm side. Uh, Mab side, you had Matty Madonna, who is the boss, uh, the acting boss of the Lucchese crime family. At the time, he was just a regular guy. Wasn't even a maid guy. Uh, Chicky, Joseph Changalini, he was there. 
underboss at that time. He was known as the underboss of Philly with Nicky Scarfo. Great guy. He was in A block. I'm in D block. I'm like, okay. The, over there, you have basically, it's just more of a dangerous side. You have a lot of lifers there. The other side, Herbie Sperling. There's everybody in their mother there. Donnie Trafaro. Um, Kevin Kelly was even on that side when he came later on. Uh, Nicky DiCarlo, Al Greco. You had a lot of guys on that side. Frankie Jupiter. And the list goes on. So I'm over there. Oscar, I meet Oscar. He says, How, how'd you, you know, who sent you? I said, Tommy Faris. He says, oh, okay, good, good, good. Back in the day, and this is also going to be for another podcast, they used to bring tanker loads of marijuana in. Tankers. So that's, that's another story in itself. So Oscar said, all right, good, good, good. Looks out for me. Introduces me to everybody. Introduces me to Maddie Madonna. Maddie goes back with my family before I was born. With my uncle Tommy Ranga who was, my family was in the private sanitation business. Uh, My aunts, cousins, everybody's in the private sanitation business. But Maddie, before he got arrested on his heroin pinch with Nicky Bonds, uh, Nicky Bonds wound up ratting on him. Maddie was, he owned a restaurant called Trey Amici's. From what I heard, the food was excellent in Trey Amici's, really good Italian food. Uh, the who's who of everybody used to go there. And when Maddie got arrested, I guess he got out on bail. And it was told to me my aunt put up his bail because he couldn't show cash, which Maddie was, did very well for himself. My aunt, I think it was $250,000 back in, I think it was the 80s when he got popped or 70. I'm not sure when he actually got arrested, but um, it might have been the 70s. She put up his bail money, 250000 which today is quite a lot. It's in the millions. So, and I'm sure he gave it the cash to put it up. Anyway, going into the story, I'm in Lewisburg. I have uh, the altercation I told you in the previous podcast, Nikki DiCarlo. And prior to that, while I was on the MAB side, I was a ball breaker. So, I... We worked for the rec department, so every unit had pool tables, so I was able to go in Maddie's unit one day, and I'm with another Italian guy, so he says, oh, there's Maddie's cell. Maddie was very meticulous. I mean, his pens were like in military order, just very, very anal that way. So I go in his room. I, I, I'm a ball breaker. I mess up his room. I put his pens in one spot. Uh, he might even had some yodels. I took turned them upside down on them. And Maddie's window, these windows opened, even though they're locked down units, small little cubicle window, it opens up. We have a four o'clock count. That's when the whole institution gets locked up. It's a stand-up count, make sure people are alive. And it's about maybe 10 to four. So everybody's going in their their cells. And it's pretty quiet. You know, when you're going into the count time, all of a sudden you hear, you little motherfucker, yelling at the top of his lungs. Everybody could hear. I'll kick your fucking ass. How dare you? My pens and my yodel. He's going off. I'm I'm hysterical laughing. I'm young, breaking balls. And I even have the guys there on the tier that say, "Uh uh-oh, would you do the Maddie? Would you do the Maddie? You shouldn't have fucked with his stuff. Everybody's breaking balls now. But you could hear it. And he's across. But we're actually, we sit, we share, even though our window, we're in different units, there's a common area outside that we could see each other from. But every, the whole institution hears him. Hears his big mouth. So right away, we get locked out. I said, Matty, relax. So it was a, Just stay away from my stuff. And he had a hair up his nose. I said, I apologize. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were that fucking crazy. So what they and they fired up even more. Anyway, that passes. Maybe about a year goes by. That's when I had the altercation with um, Nikki DiCarlo. Um, they try to settle things. 
But at this time, Sally Fusco was there, who was a soldier in the Colombo crime family. And Maddie and him were close. And I hate to say this, but it's true. Maddie, we call people like Maddie Madonna, especially in jail, a wise guy hump. Wise guy hump. Meaning if you're a wise guy, they're up your fucking ass. They don't know what they have to do for you. Like, they, you want coffee? I'll get you coffee. Uh, just a wise guy hump. Be a fucking man. And I have plenty of stories about Maddie, which are disgraceful. Uh, and I don't care for him. I don't care for him. Stand up guy, don't get me wrong. A man's man's man. But I just, I don't like the way he carried himself. So with that, I go into it with Maddie after beating up Nick. Oh, don't ever talk to me again. You see me keep on walking, man. Fuck you. Who the fuck are you? And now I start getting aggressive with him. Who the fuck are you? You're going to tell me... Like, I give a shit, go carry somebody's coffee. Go bring them coffee. Go ahead, coffee boy. With that, I wound up leaving Lewisburg. Maddie gets released. I get released. I'm in the Bronx. My Uncle Peter, Pete the Neck, and you'll hear this story later on, has a car accident, died of a broken neck. I'm highly upset. I come in from Jersey, seeing what's going on, and something happened with the funeral parlor. He was laid out at Balsamo's funeral parlor, Westchester Avenue in the Bronx, uh, off of Waterbury. Uh, Ralphie Balsamo, who is a Genovese, now they claim he's a captain. He was a soldier at the time. He was just an average guy. Something went on where Maddie had said something to my Aunt Nancy. and They were on the phone. Something happened. I said, give me the phone. Because I could hear him yelling. He's yelling at a woman over the phone. Hey, pal, what's up? Who's this? Who's this? This is Dominic Sakali. The fuck? You, you're a tough guy? You're yelling at a woman? With that, he goes off even more. You little mother... Man, fuck you, punk. And at this time, he was... I'm not sure if he was acting boss or captain. Of, or they... I think the Lucchese's might have had a three-panel commission. But he was up there. Man, fuck you. Go, go where you got to go. And I blasted him right away. I see Vinny and Bruno, and I told them. They said, fuck him. He's a loud mouth. And Bruno, actually, Bruno came and told me, he says, and I'll show you how much of a fucking wise guy hump Maddie was. Bruno was made way before Maddie Madonna was. Maddie brought, bought Bruno a Mercedes Benz. Maddie was a big earner with heroin. Nicky Bonds and all that. Big, big earner. Bought him a Mercedes Benz when Bruno got straightened out. So what does that tell you there? Bruno said, don't worry. I'll handle him. Maddie, Maddie's known to be a yeller. That's all he does. So he's yelling at the wrong fucking person. And he's like, don't worry. If he sees you, if you see him face to face, he does it. Dom, don't be dis disrespectful, but be a man. You stand your ground. I said, Vinny, Really? He says, no, I know you're going to. I won't be the aggressor. I give you my word. I'll even put my head down. But if he says something out of order, I'm going to go at him. Then he says, absolutely, you go at him. Do what you have to do. We got your back. With that, hope you like the story. There's many more to come about Manny Madonna showing his true colors, especially with Sally Locker, Herbie Sperling. I, the list goes on. Hit subscribe if you like it. Love everybody. Love the comments. Keep them coming in. I'll keep on answering as many as I can. Hopefully, I'll get to all of them. Thank you again. Remember, egvodka.com. Go there. Buy the vodka. Excellent vodka. You won't be disappointed. Everybody have a good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Much love. Peace out.